Okay, so this is a good example of when um, we need to use impulse momentum equations. If you're looking at the system as a whole, then you don't need to worry about impulse because the forces um, between the two objects in the collision, which is generally what you would be looking at, cancel each other out. So the impulses cancel each other out as well. In this example, you've got a 10 kilogram package dropping from a chute into a 24 kilogram cart. Um, the package drops with a velocity of 3 meters a second, and you can assume that it has 3 meters a second at the instant just before contact with the cart, so there's no uh, extra velocity to be gained from the final drop. You're asked to find out initially what is the final velocity of the cart, and this just becomes um, a simple momentum analysis because the net impulse is going to be zero. So to begin with, it's just the gravity, the um, the linear momentum in the system is conserved. So g1 is equal to g2. So g1 is the sum of the momentum of the package in the cart before the collision, and g2 is the momentum of the package in the cart after the collision. So the momentum due to the package is mpv1. The momentum due to the cart is zero because the cart is initially at rest, and the combined momentum of both objects after the collision is represented here. Now, we know that the cart is constrained to move in the x-direction, so we're only going to consider the initial um, speed of the um, package in the x-direction as well. So we look at mp v1 cos 30, that's our initial momentum of the cart, and equate that to mp plus mc times v2 because that's going to be in the x-direction. And by equating those two, we can find out quite easily that the speed of both the cart and the package combined um, after the collision is 0.764 meters per second. Now, if you want to look at the impulse exerted by one object on the other, then you need to uh, use this analysis, you need to just consider one of the forces. So in part B we're asked to find the impulse exerted by the cart on the package. So we consider the package alone and we work and we look at the force that the cart will be imparting on the package. So we have our initial momentum of the package alone, the force that's acting on the package during the interval delta t and the final momentum of the package. Okay, so we need to do this in two directions in order to find the two components of the force. First in the x direction, the initial um, momentum is mp times v1 cos 30. And this time we, we add the contribution of the force from the uh, cart on the package, fx, times delta t. And we equate that to the final momentum of the package, mp times v2. And solving directly, this gives us the... Um, x component of the impulse. It says it's negative, so actually it's going in, in the from right to left. Doing the same for y. We have initially we're coming down because the package is dropping, so our, our y momentum is initially negative. Afterwards we have a zero y momentum, so the impulse must be such that it stops all of that motion. And equating that we can find that the f y times delta t is equal to 15 newton seconds, which are the, the, the units of impulse. And finding the magnitude of the impulse, just a matter of taking the norm, so 18.34 squared plus 15 squared square root gives us just under 24 newton seconds. And finally, in part c, we're asked to find out how much energy is lost in the system. And to do this, we work out the initial energy, the initial kinetic energy, um, which since the cart is stationary is, is going to be zero for the cart but for the package is 45 joules and the final kinetic energy which is the combined mass times the, the speed of both objects which is just under 10 joules we can work out the energy lost i.e. I. the difference of the, the uh, initial to the final state of energy divided by the initial and it tells us that we lose around 78% of the energy